Hello readers. I'm so happy to be able to share this story with you today. It's called Red, a Crayon Story by the author Michael Hall. We're going to be reading this story for three main reasons. Oh, that's not true, for four main reasons. Number one, this is a great book to use when we want to make predictions before we read. The second reason is there's opportunities in this story to make connections to other texts that help us understand the story and other stories a little bit more. The third reason is I think that Michael Hall wants us to think about something when we get to the end of the story. And it's always fun to, to wonder about what the author wants us to know at the end of a story. What is his message? And the final reason is, oh my goodness, this is such a fun story. It is so fun. I hope you can see the pictures really well because the characters in here, oh, they're just great. Anyway, before we begin, let's take a quick peek at our cover that says red, a crayon story. And what do we notice about this? Mm -hmm. I'm noticing the same thing. There's a red crayon or a crayon called red, but yet there's something. He's not red, is he? He's dressed red, but his color is blue. I wonder what that means the story might be about. Hmm. Hmm. This is where you get a chance to think about what do you think this story is going to be about? You can make your prediction now. Down here we have the little orange guy going what? And this yellow guy going, uh-oh. What happened in yellow's brain happened in mine too. Uh-oh, a red crayon coloring blue. Hmm. Well, come along with me. This is a story about a crayon I know. I wrote it for you. Michael Hall read a crayon story as told by me. Do you see the pencil? He was red. Do you see how the pencil's writing this? Oh my gosh, I just love those details. He was red. But he wasn't very good at it. Oh dear, said Olive. Why isn't he very good at it? What is this, a fire truck? What color are fire trucks? <laughs> They're red, right? And what color is this fire truck? I know. His teacher thought he needed more practice. I'll draw a red strawberry, then you draw a red strawberry. You can do this, really. Here's his teacher, her name's Scarlett. I'll draw a red strawberry, you draw a red strawberry. You can do it. But he couldn't, really. Red strawberry, red strawberry. Like this? Oh, oh my, let's try again. His mother thought he needed to mix with other colors. Why don't you two go out and draw a nice round orange? A really big one, says yellow. A really orange one, says red. So here we use our background knowledge to think about what two colors go together to make orange. Yellow and red, right? What do you think is going to happen? But they made a big greenish one. Yuck. Oops. His grandparents thought he wasn't warm enough. Your class is making self-portraits for parents' night. Wear this warm red scarf. Nice, it's so you. Do you see how funny this is? This is silver and this is gray. Look how little they are. And they're the color of grandparents. <laughs> oh, but I read this, I made a connection to grandparents I know who always thought children were not warm enough. It's almost like that's what grandparents do. They think kids, you're just not warm enough. That's a text to self connection. <laughs> it makes me happy thinking about my grandparents. But it so wasn't. Here's crimson and violet, olive. Oh dear me. So goldie, teal, purple, red, 
orange, green. These are their self-portraits. Hmm. Everyone seemed to have something to say. Amber said, sometimes I really wonder if he's red at all. Hazelnut, don't be silly. It says so on his label. Cocoa Bean says, he came that way from the factory. Frankly, I don't think he's really bright, says Fuchsia, who's of course a very bright color. Well, I think he's lazy, said Grape. Right, he's got to press harder, said Army Green. Really, apply himself, said Steel Gray. Give him time, he'll catch on, said Sunshine. Of course he will, said Sea Green. This reminds me a little bit of that book, The Day the Crayons Quit. Of course, both the books are about crayons, but more importantly, what helps us understand this book is that this book is about feelings and wanting to feel included and wanting to feel important. And that's The Day the Crayons Quit, too. But he didn't catch on. Green frog, black sheep, brown cow, red, All the art supplies wanted to help. The masking tape thought he was broken inside. This will hold you together. The scissors thought his label was too tight. One snip should do it. I thought he wasn't sharp enough. <laughs> Stay still now. The pencil sharpener thought he wasn't sharp enough. Look how helpful people are trying to be. But even with all our help, and all his hard work. Is he red? He just couldn't get the hang of it. I wonder how he's feeling right about now. I expect there's folks out there who could make a connection to how he might be feeling right now. He tries and tries and tries but it seems like he's just not good enough. Maybe to a character in another book or something in your own life, you could really get the sense of how Red might be feeling right now. One day he met a new friend. Barry, will you make a blue ocean for my boat? Ooh, will you make a blue ocean for my boat? What do you think he says? Yes? No, I can't, I'm red. Will you try? So he did. Thank you, it's perfect. You're welcome. Oh, it was easy. Why is it easy? Because an ocean's blue and he's blue on the inside, isn't he? And he didn't stop there. Blue bells, blue jeans, blue bird, blue berries, blue whale, I'm blue. How do you think he's feeling now? Oh my goodness. I bet we could make a connection to another character in a book or maybe how we felt sometimes when we came, we were able to do something. It was actually easy for us to do. How good does that feel? I expect we can connect right away with how blue feels right now. I mean red. He was blue and everyone was talking. Olive says, my son is brilliant. Amber said, who could have known he was blue? Hazelnut said, I always said he was blue. Cocoa Bean said, it was obvious. Barry said, his blue ocean really lifted me. Remember, she, she drew the, the uh, boat. Sea Green said, all of his work makes me happy. Brown said, his blue strawberries are my favorite. Apple Green said, he's so intense. Yellow said, I'm going to make a green lizard with him, a really big one, because we know yellow and blue make. That's right. 
Gray says, I hear he's working on a huge new project. And Scarlet, he's really reaching for the sky. Has he changed at all? Only in how he feels about himself, right? His understanding of himself. And people around him all changed how they viewed him, didn't they? Oh my goodness. And he really was. Look, reaching for the sky. That's a happy crayon. And that's the end of our story. And now's the time to have a small discussion about what do you think the message that Michael Hall wanted us to be thinking about after we finished reading his story, Red, a crayon story. Some of the answers I've heard over the years as I've read this story is, be who you are. Who you are on the outside might not show who you are on the inside. It's easy to feel bad when you see, it seems like you can't do things. All of these are really important messages that Michael Hall asks us to think about as we read his story, Red, a crayon story. I love this book. I hope you enjoyed reading it, hearing it as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Till next time.